All right. First and foremost, I want to start off by saying, Brock Thayahawa, Brock Thayahawa Shai, Brock Thayahawa, Brock Thayahawa Shai, Brock Thayahawa, Brock Thayahawa Shai, Call Hala Yahawa, Ba Shem, Yahawa Shai, Ba Shem, Raka Kwadash, double honors to the apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule well and who taught me this truth, and Shalawam to you, Sincer Akiam, out there listening, learning, and pushing this truth. And shalom to the few sincere Akwath that are out there listening and learning as well. With that being said, Adawan and Ratazah, this will be edifying. As usual, I'm going to go into Raka Kodash. And uh, this shouldn't be too long. Um, it's got a couple um, videos that I wanted to show you. A couple of things that happened or that are that are about to happen in the news. And um, a couple scriptures uh, that I wanted to bring out at camp, but the spirit... Uh, you know, took us down another path. So I said, uh, I just speak on it, um, you know, today in this lesson. All right. And um, today's date is January 1st, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. Again, 20 uh, January 1st, the so-called new year, right? The hopeful year of uh, Jacob's trouble. That's what Elder Apostle uh, Tahar coined uh, 2024. All right. So, hey, that's a beautiful, uh, <laughs> that's a beautiful uh, theme for 2024. Adawan Ratazad, that's fulfilled, you know, because we know Jacob's trouble. Hey, man, that, once Jacob trouble commences, we, we, we're, we're, we're almost out of here. It's going to be a tumultuous time, uh, a, um, a horrific time, you know. Our faith is going to be tested uh, more than ever, but that coincides with uh, the kingdom. Through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom, you know? So Jacob's trouble goes hand in hand with uh, all hell breaking loose, famine, pestilence, uh, race wars, class wars, civil war, the third's woe, the karagma, okay? The RFID, CHIP being made mandatory. All these things coincide with Jacob's trouble. And and then the, the the cherry on top that the main thing we're looking forward to is the return of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach at the end of it. All right, Adawan Ratazal, we be worthy and we be we be uh, delivered. We'll be saved, you know, because we are not yet saved. We are yet this day in captivity, where Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has scattered us and subjected us to payments. And given us into the hands of our enemies. So anyway, um, with that being said, uh, the first thing I saw, you know, first a lot, a lot is going on. A lot we we touched on some of the things at camp. A lot of things are going on. Shit is hot and heavy in the Middle East. Okay, the Red Sea is getting hot and heavy. Uh, India then stepped in. It's patrolling the Red Sea. Um, shit is hot and heavy with that Ukraine. The war with Ukraine and Russia. You know, that happened during the during during the new year over there. You know, Russia bombed Kiev, you know. Hey man, shit is turning up. Shit is getting hot and heavy. Things are intensifying. And as you can see, uh from Wyon, it says um thirty two minutes ago, massive earthquake jolts Japan. And we know these are signs of the times. These are signs of the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Earthquake in diverse places, uproars of the people, you know, wars, rumors of wars. So it says, uh, Japan earthquake. Japan witnesses 21 earthquakes in 90 minutes. Japan witnesses 21 earthquakes in 90 minutes. So if that's not a sign, I don't, I don't know what the hell you think. What you looking for? Okay, if that's not a major sign, okay, <laughs> again, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. If that's not a a, a, a good sign, that's not a good way to, to start the year off, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so it says an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.6. So it, on the Richter scale, right, that's not a, a small earthquake. That's a large earthquake. An earthquake with a magnitude of seventy of seven point six uh, hit north central Japan on the first day of New Year. 
Japan Meteorolo Meteorological Agency issued a tsunami warning along the western coastal regions of Ish Ishikawa, Niga Niigata, and Toyama prefectures. Okay? And the article goes, uh, the video goes more in depth in what happened and, you know, so on and so forth. But you get the idea. All right? So it happened, again, Japan witnesses 21 earthquakes in 90 minutes. And it happened on so-called New Year's. And that's pretty much uh, the theme, the main point of this lesson is I'm going to go into uh, New Year's. It's not the New Year. We're not in the New Year. Okay? Okay, the winter time is the end of the year. The winter solstice, okay? The new the new year comes in in the springtime. That's when everything is renewed, refreshed. In the wintertime, everything is dead. There's no life, okay? So anyway, I'll go into that uh, further, okay? But I got another, uh, another video that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is another video from uh, Wyon. It's from nine hours ago, and it says uh, the thumbnail... It says tech layoffs to continue in 2024, question mark. And we know that's how um, they've already been forecasting that the beginning of the new year, there's going to be mass layoffs again. And, um, you know, they're in the, in the um, car manufacturing, they're saying there's going to be layoffs. You know, they're predicting, they're already foreshadowing mass layoffs. And we know that's how 2023 started the same exact way. <laughs> okay. This is nothing new going into that same theme again. When, when I go into the word new, new means refreshed. Okay. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay. 2023 started off with mass layoffs in the tech sector. So they're saying is, is, is uh, 2024 going to start off the same way. Okay. So, you know, you can watch, uh, I'll, I'll read a little bit of the, of the description. It says, um, the video is entitled, What Does the Recent Wave of Tech Layoffs Mean? All right. So it says, Tech Industry Overshadowed by Cloud of Layoffs. Around 260,000 people lost their jobs globally, says report. Watch this video to get more insights. All right. So you can watch, um, you can watch the video for yourself. But I just thought that was interesting. That's a, what a hell of a way to start uh, 2024. Okay. Uh, bombings in fucking uh, 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 Kiev, you know, uh, earthquake earthquakes in Japan, you know, and, and 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 layoffs on the horizon. What a beautiful way to start 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. So, um, but that's pretty much the point. All right, that's pretty much the point. So, um, like I was saying, it's so-called New Year's, right, and. Again, we are not in the new year, okay? The new year starts in the springtime. When you think about it, just use your common sense. And the springtime is when everything comes back to life. Springs up, spring, life springs forth, okay? The trees, the flower, everything starts to become alive again. Everything starts to die in the fall. The leaves fall off and wither away. And, and then what comes after the fall? The winter time, Okay? So, um, and we, we, we brought out in a previous camp and all the other brothers have brought it out that the whole, uh, Christmas is pagan, which we all know, but Christmas goes back to the celebration of the winter. Of course, uh, Nimrod and Ceramicus and Tammuz, you know, but, um, it also is, it, it also links into the celebration of the winter solstice, right? So this is off of Wikipedia. And we know the winter, the winter solstice, I believe this year came in around, okay, winter solstice. It says date, December 21st or 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere. All right. And June or June 20th or 21st in the Southern Hemisphere related to winter festivals. Okay. So let's read a little bit of, about the winter solstice. So it says the winter solstice, also called hibern hiberno solstice, which that makes you think of the word hibernation. What happens during hibernation? The bears, the animals, they, they they prior to hibernation, what do they do? 
that like the bears, they'll eat a bunch, a whole bunch of food, store up a lot of fat. The squirrels, they'll they'll gather the acorns and the nuts, and, you know. And what are they preparing for? They're preparing for the winter time, when nothing's falling, nothing's growing, you know. They they they're they're amassing a stockpile, right? And they're preparing for the the winter, the winter solstice, and they hibernate. They go to the bears go to sleep. The, the squirrels and shit they they you know they they go they go into their their, their uh their lair you know they don't come back out until what the springtime the springtime is when the bears wake back up you know what i'm saying so it says the winter solstice also called the hi hibernal solstice occurs when either the either of occurs when either of earth's poles reaches its maximum tilt away from the sun this happens twice yearly, once in each hemisphere, northern and southern. For that hemisphere, the winter solstice is the day that is shortest period of daylight and longest night of the year, and when the sun is at its lowest daily maximum elevation in the sky. Each polar region experiences continuous darkness or twilight around its winter solstice, uh, solstice Salaki. But this is the main point here. The winter solstice occurs during the during the hemisphere's winter. In the northern hemisphere, this is the is this is the December solstice, December twenty first or December twenty second, and in the southern hemisphere, this is June. This is the June solstice, June twentieth or twenty first. Although the winter solstice itself lasts only a moment. The term also refers to the day on which it occurs. The term midwinter is also used synonymously because you're in the it signifies the middle of winter, the mid, the dead of winter, the heart you're in the heart of winter, the heart at the end of the year. I mean uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the of 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 nothing growing, you know. The winter, the term midwinter is also used synonymously with the winter solstice. Although it carries other meanings as well, um, traditionally it may it, in many temperate regions the winter solstice is seen as the middle of winter. Although today in some countries and calendars it is seen as the beginning of winter. Other names are the extreme of winter, okay, or the shortest day. Read, read a little bit more. It says since prehistoric. Since prehistory, the winter solstice has been a significant time of year in many cultures. It's, it's pagan, the pagan holiday, the pagan festivities. Okay, uh, the winter solstice has been a significant time of year in many cult cultures and has been marked by festivals and rituals. It and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh said, "Learn not the way of the heathen." It marked the symbolic death and rebirth of the sun. The gradual waning of daylight hours is reversed and begins to grow again. Some ancient monuments such as New Grain, Stonehenge, and Cahokia Woodhenge are aligned with the sunrise or sunset on the winter solstice. So that's the point. So that's the point, okay? The winter solstice is not the beginning. You know, wintertime, December, January 1st. Winter go goes all the way into like February. Okay, because springtime starts in what, like uh, March and April. Okay, so December, January, uh, February—that's all. When you're 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 in the heart of winter time. Again, the the December is pretty much December thirty first. December thirty first, or how many days in December? Thirty days. There's like thirty first or whatever. How many fucking days is it in December? And January first—that's pretty much midwinter, the middle of winter. Okay. The dead of the, the, you know, the dead, the dead season, the middle of the dead season when nothing grows. Again, spring, the spring around March and April, that's when, that's the new year. That's the beginning of life. That's the beginning of the new year. Springtime. Okay. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the point. I don't want to write this out. This made, that made sense. So, um, I got a couple scriptures that was in my mind and, um, you know, I just go through them. Uh, matter of fact, let's start with Isaiah 65. 
I have that. Let's go to let's get it in the blue letter. Isaiah 65 and 17. Um, and this is what we're waiting for. That's what this is what Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming to do. He's coming to refresh the earth. We're looking for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And the word new there is is kainos in the Greek, meaning refreshed. But I'm getting I'm gonna get this in, in the Old Testament, Isaiah. Isaiah 65 and 17. It goes hand in hand with that. Uh for behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Hey Amen. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is coming with healing in his wings. The scriptures tell you that this is gonna be like a bad dream, man. <laughs> you know? Es we, hey, Esau Edom is gonna be uh, you know, a thing of the past. <clears throat> said the eye that see him shall behold him no more. Hey, we're gonna be praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in the kingdom. Even the fir trees are gonna rejoice in that day. And that's what we're, that, hey, we can't wait. We're hastening that day. Okay? All right? So the point that I wanted to look up is the word new. All right? Strong's H2319. So it says, um, Salakia. So it says uh, new. New thing, fresh. So let's go a little bit deeper. Strong's H, the root word of it. Strong H2318. Which says, uh, to be new, renew, repair. To renew, make anew, to repair. To renew oneself. So that's what Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming to do. Because this earth is fucking destroyed. It's defiled under the inhabitants thereof. This bitch is a concrete, concrete jungle. Polluted. The air is polluted. The, 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 the water is polluted. You know, the animal, everything is polluted. The people are polluted. Why? Because the rulers, the rulers, the earth is out of course. Okay? Salakia, Salakia. Fucking, it's congested still. Fucking Satan, Salakia. Salak, man, fucking Satan, man. And Esau, fucking, again, the earth is fucking polluted. Spraying chemtrails, pumping all type of poisons in the fucking air. Polluting the goddamn food, the water. Got our bodies all jacked up, you know? Fucking, hey, man, that's, we can't wait for the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to, to sweep this place with the besom of destruction. That's what that fire is going to do, okay? A fire, the fire is a, a cleaning agent. The number one cleaning, there's two major cleaning agents in the earth. The first would be water. You want to clean something, you use water. And that's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai did in the days of Noah, in the old world. He flooded the earth with water because of the wickedness was exceedingly high. Okay? And the water refreshed the earth, cleaned the earth. But this time, he's going to do it with fire. The fire is going to terraform the earth. The, after the nuclear fallout, everything's going to be terraformed and refreshed, made new again. Okay? The earth is going to yield its strength again. Okay? Because the the, it's a, the scriptures tell you that the earth has been languishing. Okay? So this is Isaiah uh, 14 and 23. Uh, let me see where. Uh, I'll start at 20. I'll run through it. Thou shall not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of the evildoers shall never be re renowned. Esau ain't going to get away. He's not getting away, man. He's our chief adversary. He's the number one person. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is coming to to uh to 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 uh to uh to to, 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 to devour, okay? You know, to, to to deal with. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Okay. It says, prepare slaughter for his children. Um Salak here. It says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. Because you are your fathers coming back in the regeneration. You come back in the third or fourth generation. That they do not rise nor possesses nor possesses the land, nor fill the faces, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Affliction shall not rise a second time. Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. 
and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord Yahweh. This is the main point. I will also, and this is talking about America, Babylon the Great, the scene of great future judgment. America is going to be completely laid desolate, a wasteland, okay, a desert. And what's going to do that? Intercontinental ballistic missiles, the second death, America being completely on fire. The, how, the scripture says he's going to put out the line of confusion. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai. That, that, uh, that the, the that the wind the winds of destruction the winds at, uh, from the nuclear uh a bomb you know that bomb that heat that fire that gushing that you know that's gonna sweep plant, sweep the earth man okay when you sweeping what are you doing cleaning up that's what's gonna clean this place up that fire okay that's what's gonna make the earth new again okay Isaiah Salaki Isaiah to, uh, Isaiah 24, 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. What's going to do that? The ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. The scriptures say that the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard from the impact of those missiles. All right. It's going to hit chiefly America, Babylon the Great, and the so-called Holy Land, the land of Palestine, the land of Israel. Those two places are going to be Late are going to be flattened, completely destroyed. But the whole earth is not going to be destroyed. Okay, certain places, certain parts of the earth are going to hit, be hit also. All right, but but the whole earth is not going to be destroyed. All these countries, all these nations are not going to be destroyed. The only two nations that are going to be completely wasted are Babylon the Great, America, and so-called the land of Palestine, the Holy Land, the land of Israel. Okay, this is uh, Ecclesiastes. One and four, one generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Okay, so the earth is not going to, uh, like uh, Esau and these heathens, these people that are not in the know, they they, they foresee uh, the nu nuclear fallout. They're, they're, they're predicting that the whole earth is going to explode, you know, like the Death Star, you know, that's not going to happen. The earth abideth forever. Only key Key points are going to be destroyed, okay? And and that nuclear war is going to ultimately refresh the earth, clean the earth, okay? So that's pretty much the point. I'll read a, a couple more and I'll close out, Salakia. So that's pretty much the point. Again, uh, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble, right? So um, let's see. I, I hit three more and I'll close out. Ephesians um Ephesians five and five and fourteen. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Hamashiach shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay? We're heading into evil times, bad times. I don't want Ratazah to be getting into Jacob's trouble. All right. Daniel 12 and 1, a time like never before. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord Adawan is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. So we got to walk in the spirit to the best of our ability. Okay. The just shall live by faith, not by. Okay. We walk by faith, not by sight. Um. Let's see. Uh, also. 1 Corinthians 7 and 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both that have wives be as though they had none. Okay, so the time is short. So keep your eyes single. Focus on the prize. Okay? Redeeming the times because the times are evil. Measuring the times. Watching as well as praying. Putting on as the elect. You know? Um, Close out here. Isaiah, uh, it's like it, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, refreshing, all right, of your mind, 
And what, what clean, cleans you, what refreshes your mind? These scriptures, all right? But you just can't be a hearer of the word. You have to be a doer. You have to apply the scriptures. And in and, 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 and applying the scriptures, you become a new creature. I don't want righteous out will be uh, found worthy, acceptable, blameless when Yahushua Hamashiach returns. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove, we all got to prove ourselves, all right? And the ultimate proven hour, the ultimate test is coming, the hour of temptation. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. So that's the point. I don't want Rathazah. This was edifying, exhorting, and comforting to the elect. Hey, man, keep fighting, keep pushing. We're close. Shalom. Wa, abad the ball. Kwan, Meshurala.